Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Jeff Flake says he might have to run in 2020 to stop Trump from being crushed by Elizabeth Warren. In an interview on ABC's This Week Senator Jeff Flake said that he was considering running against Trump in 2020, because if he doesn't then Trump will lose to Elizabeth Warren. Ha. I do worry that in the future we'll be faced with a President Trump running for re-election on one side, drilling down hard on a diminishing base, and on the other side, you might have, you know, someone like Bernie Sanders, or, Elizabeth Warren on the far left, of, the Democratic Party. That leaves a huge swath of voters in the middle that, are, maybe looking for something else, said Flake. But you were open to running for president in 2020? Asked interviewer Jonathan Carl I don't rule anything out, but it's not in my plans, said Flake. Like I said, I haven't thought that deeply about it. But I do believe if the president is running for re-election, if he continues on the path that he's on, that that's gonna leave a huge swath of voters looking for something else, he said. When you look at some of the audiences cheering for Republicans sometimes, you look out there and you say, those are the spasms of a dying party. When you look at the lack of diversity sometimes, and it depends on where you are, obviously, but by and large, we're appealing to older white men, and there are just a limited number of them, and anger and resentment are not a governing philosophy, says Jeff Flake. Is Jeff Flake totally delusional? Woman who spoke up against NBC's Matt Lauer exposes shocking way liberals tried to bully her into silence. Addie Collins Zenon, Matt Lauer's former assistant wrote an article about the unpleasant affair she had with Matt Lauer when she was 24 years old. NBC's Matt Lauer is one of the many liberals in the media who have been fired over their treatment of women. Now Zenon is exposing the awful things being said about her for coming forward. The situation really took its toll on me. I changed physically. I changed emotionally. Fear crept into my life. I became unsure of myself. Any confidence I had was gone. For him, it was a conquest, said Zenon. I was under his spell. It was all consuming. I couldn't focus. I couldn't concentrate. Every time I turned on the TV, because I anchored the local news in the morning, there was his face. And he was acting all jolly and happy. And here am I carrying the weight of what had happened and fending off the national press. I didn't want to start my career being known one of Matt Lauer's girls, she said. I understand that people are going to paint me as a home wrecker, as a slut, and a whore and those are things I have been called. It was suggested yesterday to me that please please go get hit by a bus, said Zenon. My family is shattered by this. They are afraid for me. This all trickles down to a lot of people that are affected, so having these conversations is really important, but also there's a lot of shame attached to what I did, she said. Treasury Secretary Nutchin receives mysterious package as Christmas present, inside is something disgusting. U.S. Treasury Secretary Nutchin received a mysterious package outside his home in Bolera, California, along with a Christmas card that criticized the Republican tax cuts. The LAPD took the package and x-rayed it. Then the LAPD bomb squad opened it. Inside the box was manure. There was nothing other than insulting comments. There was nothing dangerous in the box, no controlled substances. No threats were made, said LAPD officer Ray Barron. However the man who sent the box spoke out. It turned out to be L.A. psychologist Robbie Strong. Strong tried to make sending poop to a congressman into a strong political statement. It was act of political theater, claimed Strong. He also called it a prank. The thing I live by is a rule of transparency and I was exercising my First Amendment rights, said Strong. A few years ago when? 
a Supreme Court ruling, said that corporations are persons and money equals free speech, that is so absurd and my rule of thumb is now that if corporations are free speech, then so is horses t, said Strong. He also said that Republicans have done nothing for the American worker. Strong posted photos of the package, where some of the letter was visible. Mrs. Nutchen and Trump, we're returning the gift of the Christmas tax bill. It's Bulls T. Warmest wishes, the American people. P.S. Kiss Donald for me, it said. Lib professors say Trump's love for Christmas makes him just like the Nazis. Now that Republican President Donald Trump has called out liberals for fighting a war on Christmas, they have had to rethink their strategy. Now some clever leftists in the press are attacking Christmas differently by saying that Trump fighting against this war on Christmas is somehow proof that he is a white supremacist. Newsweek magazine, which bent over backwards to praise Democrat Barack Obama during his presidency, has hit a new all-time low by publishing an article where writer Christina Mazza asked left-wing professors who are supposedly experts about what they think of Trump supporting Christmas. Mazza set them up by alleging that Trump promoting Christmas coexists with re-emerging white identity politics. Said Professor Richard King of Washington State University about Trump's pro-Christmas stance, I see such invocations of Christmas as a kind of cipher, what some would call a dog whistle. It does not appear to be intolerant or extreme, but to attentive audiences it speaks volumes about identity and belonging, who and what are fully American. Georgia State University professor Joe Perry went even further, claiming that Trump promoting Christmas is just like Adolf Hitler's strategy to intimidate Jews. He said, the far right's engagement in the war on Christmas explicitly posits that there is one single true or correct Christmas. The holiday's true nature is somehow under threat from outsiders and liberals who act as forces of degradation, multiculturalism and secularization. Added sociology professor Randy Blazak, committed white nationalists love Trump's Bring Back Christmas campaign almost as much as evangelicals. His followers see this as gospel and a rebuking of multiculturalism and political correctness, and the growing influence of Jews, Muslims, atheists and other non-wasps. Do you think these professors' point of view is crazy? Pope Francis makes shocking statement about Trump's Jerusalem decision during Christmas sermon. President Trump fulfilled his campaign promise when he made his declaration about Israel. Obama and Bush had made similar promises but failed to follow through. Now that Trump has accomplished this mission, the mainstream media is suddenly against it, they are worried about the Muslims who will have their feelings hurt. The media has even gotten to the Pope, who brought up Jerusalem during his Christmas sermon. We see Jesus in the children of the Middle East who continue to suffer because of growing tensions between Israelis and Palestinians. On this festive day, let us ask the Lord for peace for Jerusalem and for all the Holy Land, said Pope Francis. Let us pray that the will to resume dialogue may prevail between the parties and that a negotiated solution can finally be reached, one that would allow the peaceful coexistence of two states within mutually agreed and internationally recognized borders, said Francis. Wow! May the Lord also sustain the efforts of all those in the international community inspired by goodwill to help that afflicted land to find, despite grave obstacles, the harmony, justice and security that it has long awaited he said. We see Jesus in the faces of Syrian children still marked by the war that, in these years, has caused such bloodshed in that country. May beloved Syria at last recover respect for the dignity of every person through a shared commitment to rebuild the fabric of society, without regard for ethnic and religious membership, said Pope Francis. Bernie Sanders admits Trump's tax cuts are a very good thing then tries to insult him anyway. President Trump's new tax plan is going to save the American people millions of dollars. 80% of people will see their taxes go down considerably, 
and only 5% will see an increase of over $10. Liberals are trying to make this seem like only rich people and corporations are being helped. Bill Kristol even called it creepy that corporations were giving more money to their employees as a result of the tax break. However, when you look at the facts, even Bernie Sanders was forced to admit that the tax cuts were a very good thing for the middle class. But he had some caveats. That's why we should have made the tax breaks for the middle class permanent. But what the Republicans did is made the tax breaks for corporations permanent, the tax breaks for the middle class temporary, claimed Sanders. Meanwhile, at the end of 10 years, well over 80 million Americans are paying more in taxes. 13 million Americans, as a result of this legislation, lose their health insurance, said Sanders. Health premiums are going up. You've got a $1.4 trillion deficit as a result of this bill. And Paul Ryan is going around saying, oh, we have to offset that deficit by cutting Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. To answer your question, should we have focused on the needs of the middle class? We should have, said Sanders.